All right, everybody, welcome back to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus Musicians Mastermind. We've got Carrie JK and Joe Freeman uh, on with us against the usual cast of characters. We are open for calls as always. So if you are, if you do find us on our live uh, stream there on our private Facebook group, feel free. I always put the uh, login for Zoom there so you can jump on and ask questions. Today's topic is print on demand it's very tempting it's in some cases it is a great thing to do you just got to know how to do it and because it all is not cut and dry with a lot of these things we were we were passed around a youtube video this week and uh that had some good stuff and some stuff that uh who Car- carrie's been involved in this for a long time well carrie found some some holes in some of the ideas now i'm not sure how old that video was either so you know you, that may have been done a year ago or something like that and you know in the internet stuff is changing constantly so we try to stay on top of that but uh so that is going to be today's topic uh you can find us at ludini rock and roll circus.com check back often when you you see these masterminds you might be a little confused as to how to get on to the mastermind all you got to shoot one of us an email or message me on facebook and we will show you how to get into our private group all right guys so let's get into this print on demand the good the bad i, I can't use that this week the good the bad and the ugly i've done that already but <laughs> the print, I'll, I'll come up with a catchy title for it later so print on demand so what Carrie is has the most experience with this. I'm sure Joe has some thoughts on it as well. Joe's been in marketing for a long time. So, uh, but we're going to go ahead and start with Carrie because I think he we were he was giving us tidbits even before he started the recording. He's like chomping at the bit. He's like a he's like a you know a, a thoroughbred racehorse, like ready to go. So, Carrie, what do you got on what's what's right. on your mind about right, this well, print on demand let's business? Just, let's just start out with what this is. Um, just so. Uh... So, so that this is like the 101 for people who don't know what we're talking about. I think most people do now. Um, we're at a stage now where all around the world there are people who will produce your product, will print your design on a T-shirt, on a pillow, a tea cosy, a tea towel, a mug, um, and they will do it in units of one and they will send it to anybody you wish. And this is the basis of many... Uh, um, uh, net industry now of people who will put designs on merchandise and sell it and sell it and fulfill it straight to the, cons- the consumer. So all you have to do is run the website and promote it, which is lovely. I mean, like the profit margins obviously aren't as good as if you were doing traditional stock, but the um, advantage is you don't have to hold any stock up front. Um, it means that you can have a design and you can have a design out there to sell and only ever produce what is sold, which is wonderful. It means that you will never have masses of uh, of, um, unsold stock lying around. Um, It's no use if you want stuff to take out on tour with you. There you will still need to go and get some stuff Mm -hmm. screen printed so you've got stock to hand out. It only works for stuff you're going to sell online. Also, then, of course, you've got the whole thing of um, how to promote this stuff online which um, Joe and Lou will be able to say a lot more about. But in terms of actually creating products and producing them, it's very, very enabling, and there's a lot you can do. And we'll talk a little bit about the mechanics of that itself. Um, well, uh, first of all, like there's, I mean, Lou and I, we've, we've been through quite a lot of companies here. And I will say as well, there's so many companies doing this now. Uh, if, you are, if you do want to go down this road, shop around. <coughs> Don't just go with the first provider you find. And also, don't stick with the first provider you find. Because there's so much competition now, and um, you you can shop around for the people who will do what it is you want to do. And many of the big ones, people like Printify, Printful, many of these aren't actually printers themselves, but aggregators. So what they will do is they will work with a lot of print shops around the world. And um, we could do screenshots, but we'll just talk about this for now. Um, like Printful for uh, Printify, for example, will have a list of printers in the United States, in Europe, and, and generally what you do is you can choose the one that will give you the best prices for what you want. You will have the colours that you want, um, or or better still, who are nearest to your customer you want to order from. This is another great thing about this. I, a UK seller, can sell to somebody in America. And have it deli- have it um, made and fulfilled from America. 
so no international shipping or if that customer is in europe i can get i can i can get it fulfilled from um, a european printer and so on so it's very empowering in that sense is that you can get your products made and fulfilled by whoever it is one of the downsides of this is you will never see what's being sent out so one thing I will say about this, once you do start doing this, always order one for yourself first. And we're going to talk about one little adventure that Lou had um, with this recently. So you can say how this went. Um, so do get at least one for yourself. They're generally, there have been some that will do um, free samples, but generally the samples just means you buy one yourself at wholesale price, which is no great hardship. And your merch should be something you'd want to own anyway. So Absolutely. To see that um like i say the um, the markups aren't spectacular you will not get a 60 percent markup working this way at least not selling it for um an amount that people will want to pay so you'll, you'll have to bear that in mind especially if you start factoring in marketing costs um and there's people that do all that as well you'll end up with quite a small um marketing margin depending on how you do it but at our level, and for what we're doing as musicians. We just lost you, Carrie. Sorry. There you are. We, you we lost your mic um, for a second, buddy. Go ahead. All right. So much of what we do isn't just about selling a product like packaged cheese. What we're doing is going to be selling that merch as part of a bigger package and as part of a buy-in to uh, the experience of being a part of the music there. A band T-shirt is not the same as like a t-shirt you'd buy in the shopping mall that's got a cat on it we are in a different market now the video that we watched um and then um, the letters we watched she is very much in the um, packaged cheese market it's finding um, generic designs that will reach as many people as possible and you send them out to as many people as possible and that's how you'd make money from it um, and it doesn't matter that the product, that the profit margin isn't huge because you're doing it in bulk. Right. I uh, just, just before you continue on, um, that web, that, um, YouTube channel is called wholesale Ted. Mm -hmm. And I actually watched a bunch of her other videos and from that one video, we get that impression. But in most of her other videos, she says, you really want to find unique stuff. Mm -hmm. So she's not talking about print on demand there. She's get, she gets into like, um, finding stuff on AliExpress and things like that that are mm. weird and crazy that people aren't going to necessarily find themselves on Amazon. <clears throat> so um, there is two thoughts. Mm. And sometimes there's two thoughts within the same kind of like approach. So sometimes something works for some people in a certain niche and sometimes you've got to do something else. Continue. Yeah. I mean, there's something else there as well. I mean, this is another thing. Uh, I use packaged cheese and disparagingly. You've still got to have pride in your product. If you're making shit, then you won't be able to keep it going indefinitely. After a while, people will realize you're selling shit and will stop buying from you. There is one quote in one of the videos that she did that, uh, that I've written here. There's a reason I pay somebody to do my designs. So she knows herself that design and creative work isn't her forte. So she gets someone else to do that. Selling the stuff is her forte. Yeah, I mean, and that's why she you, does that. I mean, the, the thing that I would, that, like, I always think of right away in terms of, t like, I'm wearing a band T-shirt right now that's actually mm -hmm. really interesting and different and unique. And actually, it's like a piece of art, you mm -hmm. know, on a shirt. And I think that that's what you got to make sure you were thinking about when you're mm -hmm. going, if you're going to do the print-on-demand thing, I mean, we looked at this, Carrie and I've been talking about this for several months. And I mean, you can get, you can get sneakers. <laughs> I mean, you can get like, you can get almost anything you want, uh, uh, put on, uh, there, but it has to be something that was going to like really resonate with your, with your niche. It's gotta mm. be like, they've gotta be like, I gotta have that. So you can't just like slap some BS on a, on a shirt. Um, you know, unless you come up with some really great saying, that you know yeah. the people in your niche are going to be like you know they're going to want to wear around so they can show the world they have some kind of you know philosophy but, or whatever I, I will say this is one thing that came from the video that you did send me and it came up a little bit in another one was um when it comes to slogan shirts um a particular trend and or a quote from a movie and this is other things i've had lately with people i've been speaking to around etsy who've had this as well is where trademark and copywriting comes in 
and everybody's got their sort of like barstool lawyers who um so it's all right if you're doing fair use and all the rest of it well first of all unless you're actually a lawyer you play with this stuff at your peril so putting aside whether you so putting aside whether you could let's talk about whether you should now we as uh, musicians our whole thing is we're creative we should have creative ideas and if we're leeching off somebody else's creativity then it doesn't reflect very well on our music on our music so that's why we shouldn't do it now what so, we so define leeching off someone's creativity um Comedians, would, a good example would be joke stealing for comedians. Okay. Um, it's like um, somebody, somebody does a really good bit in a comedy act and another comic thinks, hey, that could build something from that. And, and it is hugely taboo to be doing that in um, comedy circles because, because jokes are their stock in trade and it's just seen as really... Yeah. Let, let, me, let me give you... So image-wise... Good. I want to give you an example that more fits, I think, our conversation. And that is... Um, some of you guys out there remember when Star Wars came out, um, and it wasn't long before you saw all kind of ads on TV where they tried to take that font, how they tied the S with the T and all that, mm. and you would see that on stuff, and it was a blatant like, oh, <laughs> you're trying to, you know, piggyback off of Star Wars. You're, like, I'm going to think that you're like, uh, you know. Uh, soda commercial has something to do with Star Wars because you use that font. Mm. Um, I think that, you know, I, that's the kind of thing you want to stay away from doing, you know, and there's tons of examples like of that in art where, you know, something comes out, it's really popular. Everybody tries to kind of like do their, yeah. do their take on it. They don't do anything really original. It's one thing to be inspired. It's another thing to kind of just like try to like cop that market, you know, oh, yeah. people are into this, so I'm going to make it kind of look like this, you know, yeah. so another, I mean, she gives the example of like the Coca-Cola logo uh, mm. where, you know, you can take that, font you could we could you could yeah. make your band name out of it you know that, but, that font is heavily trade which hey, well uses, that is that, 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 that as an example of right. one heavily but, trademarked. Uh, it is heavily trademarked but also it's just bad to do it's gonna mm. people are gonna yeah. know that like uh yeah, come on get an idea get an original idea yeah. so his music must suck if he's got a copy <laughs> off of coca-cola for his logo you don't understand what i'm saying so i think that that's yeah. where we're does that make sense, <laughs> yeah. sense does that make sense to you joe Yes, but coming from a print background and a graphic design background, I want to define a few things there. So with with the image, okay, you can use other people's images as inspiration. Um, you should always think of what is going to identify with your audience, and you should always try to be creative. Because if, like Lou said, if you're trying to look like Star Wars and Star Wars just come out and everybody's doing it, are you really going to stand out? don't think so you know what i mean and is your audience really going to identify with that maybe not so you with images you want to get inspiration but you can't copy someone's exact image exactly how it is i used to have to redraw things and like change different things in it to make it my own um in all of my artwork when i was doing that so like you can get inspiration you can do similar things but you can't copy someone else's image. Um, now with logos or not with logos with um, phrases and words, you can go on and search whether it's trademarked or not. But even with that, um, try to make it like, try to make it stand out, like rock out with your talk out. There's a lot of people who use, you know, the, the derogatory word in where talk is. And there's some people who use, other things there, but you can make it stand out and make it your own. If you do your own image, create your own phrase and that kind of thing, because a lot of people are doing this print on demand. So you need to look around, look through Google images, look on trademarks, look for things that are going to identify with your audience, come up with ideas, keep an idea bank, which is just an Excel spreadsheet with all your little ideas on it. <clears throat> and then be creative. So you want your band to stick out. You want your company or whatever you're promoting to stick out because otherwise, if you don't make it you and you don't make it um, unique, it's going to be really hard to market it. Um, and that's where things get really important. I worked with um, a large printer in this area for 20 some years and we worked with corporate America and I spent sometimes two to three years developing a website. 
which was print on demand, but it was personalized print on demand, kind of like Vista print. Um, and a lot of the problems we had were we built it and they wouldn't want to market it. Hmm. So that's my two cents. I'll pass it back over to you. <laughs> um, I've got, that's, that's good. That, I mean, like going with that about the, um, the phrases and that as well. I mean, one of them, um, I mean, first of all, obviously, if you're not with the band, don't get the stay off the bandwagon because you don't want somebody thinking of something else when they should be thinking of you. Uh, but in terms of uh, what you can actually use and when, um, there's a couple of other things. Like something I got from watching those videos, one of the things I put in my notes is this lady has no awareness of popular culture or rather has made the decision to ignore popular culture so it doesn't affect her business, which is fair enough. Maybe she does that. But I get I've had two examples that came up and I checked the comments to see if anyone picked her up on these. And they didn't that I saw. One of them, when she was talking about phrases that aren't trademarked, and she used one that it turned out was, and said, all right, you can't use that. But here's one. There's loads of T-shirts that sell this way, but it's not a trademark phrase. And that means, hey, it's common mean you can use it. Go ahead. And the phrase was, Frankie says, relax. She said, but she, she missaid it and said, Freddie. I think she said, Freddie. Yeah. Says, well, relax. okay. Well, Frankie well, says, relax. But yeah, yeah well, I caught that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so what she's just told me then is that one of the biggest selling band T-shirts of the 1980s and, um, and a pop culture phenomenon was never trademarked. This, the, the, I call she, bullshit. She, she's too young. <laughs> Yeah, she's yeah. too. Yeah, she's too. Yeah, I don't think she even knew what she was talking about. Yeah, yeah, that 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 you know that, that's the kind of thing. I mean, if you <laughs> wanted to say, let's put it this way: say though that your music was a callback to mm. the '80s, you could do something with "relax." Yeah, and, I mean, I've, and do I've, something, I've, I've, but you got to be. You had the the line is it has to be creative and clever. It mm. can't just be like you know my band name and says relax. It's you got to mm. do something interesting with it. And right now I'm drawing a blank on somebody that has done something interesting with with uh, uh, with, with with something like that. But that is <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and and in terms of images as well, like um, there are certain images that you can that are public domain. Like you you can see all the time. Like there's that image, the famous image of Sheikh Guevara. Mm. That you know it, 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 it's over, and you know you can, people dress it up and do different things with it. So maybe uh, depending on your you know your music's philosophy or ideas or the or the message you're trying to you know the image you're trying to put out there, you know something like that. You know there are different pictures of I think of Martin Luther King Jr. that are you know that people have used over mm. and over and over that you can maybe do something with you know things like that you may not even want to use that you might just want to look at those things as kind of inspiration because maybe you do something with somebody else or another thing again though watch because a lot of times people especially people who are alive have mm. their likenesses trademarked so that you can't just go like make action figures out of the guys in Aerosmith <laughs> And sell that on your website, yeah. you know, because their likenesses are. I mean, I'm sure that there are companies in China that would be happy to make that for you. <laughs> but oh, yeah. you would get in a world of crap, uh, you know, doing stuff like that. So those are all things. And and the other thing is, <clears throat> you can license stuff too. I mean, maybe you look at it. Maybe it is worth it to uh, to do. And also, nothing prevents you from reselling something else that's uh, that you know that's uh, that's been licensed so you know i mean I, something that joe and i've talked about is just putting us you know having things in our store that might be just like acdc and metallica shirts and stuff like that we're not stealing off them we're good we're just going to license that um and there's companies that already have that done for you you can literally go to aliexpress and just re you know and that isn't print on demand that is a that's drop shipping which is related to print on demand, but not exactly the same. There's other aspects to it. So you, so there are, there is ways that you can sell stuff like that. If you feel like I'm, you know, I'm seeing like a lot of people at my shows wearing, you know, ACDC and Led Zeppelin shirts. Well, I would rather them buy those off of me than mm -hmm. buy them off of, you know, someplace, you know, Amazon or whatever. So maybe you can find some way to package that you sell your record. And because you're, I, I know this is going to sound cheesy. Carrie's already rolling his eyes. Um, but it, you know, like you, because you're like a huge, say Greta Von Fleet, 
they had a, at their mm. shows, they when they sell the CD, they give you a Led Zeppelin shirt. I know that's terrible, <laughs> but but um, you know, I mean, if you really were desperate to try to like put some kind of package together, mm. theoretically, you may not. You, I don't think that's a great uh, way to do things. But if the thing is thing is licensed and you bought something that's licensed that you can resell, you can do that. But you just can't go and put people's other people's stuff. So, and isn't there a website that we can tell people where they can go check trademarked and copyrighted stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know what that is? You guys know what that is? I know that we have. I, I she talked about that in that video. Yeah, you can search for it, but I'm on it now. It's uh, tmsearch.uspto.gov. Okay. What Joe said. Tmsearch.gov. Um, <laughs> Co. was that Tonga? That's a that's a government domain. Yeah, that's a this is a dov- government um search. So it's trademark electronic search systems. Oh right, okay. So this is the U.S. government. This is the that's U.S. Right. one. So if okay. you're in New Zealand or like she was looking in New Zealand, so if you're mm-hmm. in one of those other countries, then you have to go on theirs and search theirs oh, to see if it's okay. trademark. Ah, right. I see. I because see. one of the things she was saying she was doing is if there was a statement that was trademarked in the U.S., then it's not really trademarked in New Zealand. So she's able to create um, those same same sayings and sell them in New Zealand. Mm. Now I'm I'm no legal person, but that's what it she means was if, saying. It means you got to control where you're selling things to, which isn't hard to do, right? Just, and that that's right. you just got to be aware. <clears throat> that is something that like I I missed in that it is it does go by country, so so yeah. you have to check. We I know that this is a podcasting is worldwide, so yeah, we're, uh, we're you might want to check territory. in your country of origin, <laughs> or you know proceed with caution with with stuff like that. But um, so we're gonna check phrases and trademark uh, copyrighted uh, material before we do anything with but we're also trying to encourage people to like you know maybe you can play off of that somehow or if you really feel something like that resonates with your niche you know think about how like joe and i um actually joe came up with you know for my podcast rock out with your talk out (laughs) that's pretty cool i mean i i I like every time i throw that at people like oh i like that you know so do you think we should trademark that joe yeah we should okay (laughs) because <laughs> now it's now everybody knows what it is now we're saying it so yeah, yeah. we had that in the, um in the dvd commentary for spinal tap when it got to the bit uh, when it got to the scene of him with the amp saying this one turns up to 11 and they said in the comments we should have trademarked this yeah <laughs> really should have tra- Se- several different companies put up put on amps that, yeah. that it put it had 11 on it you know after yeah that, they read re- the the spinal tap guys really regretted not trademarking <laughs> marking that line <laughs> but uh, uh so so that you know that's a great thing right there i mean do you th- th- these ideas can come from anywhere so listen you don't a fan comes up to you and says something about your music that you think is cute or kind of interesting or whatever that could be as the seed for something you're gonna that's gonna go on your merch so you know just kind of like you have to it's like what do you think about this carrie it isn't a kind of like songwriting in the sense that like you keep a sort of like as you go throughout your day somebody a certain sp- circumstance happens or somebody says something to you and it gives you that creative idea and you jot that down because you know or you hear somebody say something and you rearrange a couple of words and realize oh that's a great lyric you hey know guys. I, I, yeah i think that like coming up with this type of stuff i think we're Musicians tend to put this type of stuff in a different box, but it, it's not. It's in the same box as songwriting. It's the same box as songwriting. It's the same box mm-hmm. as all the cre- other creative yeah. stuff that you're doing, you know? Oh, oh, always. Well, you said you used the word idea bank earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say, like, if you're, if you're creative in any way, you never be without a notebook. Even if it's a notebook on your phone, always have something you can be jotting down ideas on. And <laughs> 90% of these ideas are going to suck. That's just how it is. But that you do it so that the remaining 10% will be good. Right. Okay. Yeah, so- but you might have three three um, statements that suck. But those three statements, if, you put, if you're looking back in your notes and your idea bank, all of a sudden they, they yeah, click you and out, something you combines out. in them, a thought combines, and all of a sudden you have yeah. your winner. Yeah, well, that's it. So, sometimes it's just um, you've had an idea, but it's not yet its time. Right. Um, coming so- back. 
Yeah, I want to make sure. Let's get back to the sort of ins and outs of print dump because I want people to come away from the discussion with like a good outline of kind of like if they're going to jump into POD, what they should be thinking about and considering. So go ahead. Right. So let's uh, so let's let's put aside and yes, let's assume now that you've got a kick-ass design already. So you've got a good slogan. It's yours. It's your brand. You've got your image. You know what this is going to look like. And you know it's going to suit your that your fans. So great. Let's let's assume that now. Um, you do need to know the mechanics of what's going to look good on a printed product. Um, so this is the um, so this is the nuts and bolts of it. And depending on who you work with, like there's one printer I work with, and um, I sent off the email, and this was through Printify, and they came back and they said, "Look, are you sure this is the image you want us to print?" Because this is this is going to have um, flaws on the shirt, and we don't want you coming back to us and saying that we did a shit print job and it was your image. And so I worked with them. And they told me what to do. So one of the things with that, um, like one of the most common mistakes that people make when they send um, designs for this merchandise, especially when they're not actually seeing the physical thing, is they make the, is they make the picture just too bloody small. Um. Your image, first of all, it needs to be 300 DPI resolution. If you don't know what that is, that means that when you put it into GIMP or your graphics software, it means that um, for every inch, there's 300 pixels that are going into that. So your um, 500 pixel image will actually come out much, much smaller, like a motion stamp. You need to make that image as big as possible um, so that you will have the resolution in there. Otherwise, when it gets blown up, it will fill it in with um, all sorts of noise, all sorts of distortion that you will not have control of. And depending on how they're printing it, it could completely ruin what the thing's going to look like. So do um, so do look into print resolution. Uh, I won't go into much more detail about, about, about that because it is complex. But big as you can, at least 300 DPI and research the thing. Um, colours aren't as big a deal as they used to be when it was just screen printing because now you can print with all the colors in the world if you want to however it doesn't mean they're going to look good on the shirt so you do need to, so you do need to, and some this is where some trial and error will be needed to find out what the disconnect is going to be between what you see on the screen and what actually comes through the mail when you order it it's going back to getting a sample for yourself absolutely you yeah. yeah um and if you just assume that it's going to look good, then beware. I mean, I mean, one of the common things that's obviously is like to do it with a transparent background. Um, again, if you don't know, a, this is another Google term. If you want to look this up, is transparency mask. If you don't know what a transparency mask is, find out. Because um, you want to be able to come up with a design that you can print on a variety of colors, preferably. Or especially where it's going to be designed that's printed and not the stuff around it. Um, so you've got this on the transparency mask. If you can vectorize your image, so much the better. Right. Vectorize, um, the difference between, there's two types of graphics you're going to find here, vector graphics and bitmap graphics. Vector graphics uh, basically is a series of data of a series of sh shapes and outlines. And because it's mathematical data and outlines, like mid, it's the same difference as between MIDI and audio in music. Uh, Vector will be like MIDI because it's information. And because it's information, it can be translated into whatever size you want without any loss in quality. Because it's just telling instructions on how to draw this image. Um, it becomes very, very memory inefficient if you've got thousands of colors in a vector image. So generally, that will be something that will force you to uh, restrict a certain number of colors. But... Ideally, if you can get your design in a vector-based image, then you will never have to worry about the actual size and resolution of it because it will translate. If you don't know how to do something like this, guys, go mm -hmm. to Fiverr, and <laughs> for a couple of dollars, somebody will take your image. And and, mm -hmm. and if your image is not however it was done, was it won't work, mm -hmm. you'll know for a couple bucks. Mm -hmm. And you can, you, can, you can move on from there. But you can find there's a million people on Fiverr for mm. five, ten dollars. It will like 
make sure you know give you the transparency map and the and the whole thing and the things done yeah so just okay. so, so, so like if this all sounds like greek to you or you don't understand how to do this that's what i've always done I just got somebody who yeah. knew what the hell they were doing to, <laughs> um to do just that. just to finish the point and i won't go too deep in the science but the other thing is that um so that's vector what you will normally end up start out with is a bitmap image and a bitmap image is what comes out of your camera it's uh it's it's a picture it's a picture that's there it's taken as a set resolution and you can make it bigger in gimp or photoshop or whatever but all you're doing then is it's filling in extra pixels there which aren't going to be the same it's guessing where the extra pixels should be okay. so it's not going to be the same quality at that big size than it would be otherwise and that's why if your base picture is too low res the printer or a lot of printers will just refuse to print it because they know it'll look bad when it's printed out. Yeah, you'll, they'll so, tell you fix this before we can. Do and it what they what they can do, there are websites and software called vectorizers. And if you look up a vectorizer, what it will do, it will, it will put your um, you can input your image, your bitmap image into it, and um, it will trace around the edges on there, and it will come up with a vector image of it with reduced colors that can be changed to whatever size. It will not look exactly like your bitmap image, unless it's a very simple bitmap image. But that's not the point of it. And what it can, but sometimes you can do that and end up in mad effects you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Right, but well, there is that, yeah. Thing, like one very common thing, and I'll use it before I move on from this point, um, is logos and texts. Um, I've seen this a lot of times and I've done it myself where you'll come up with something that looks really good with a font there, but they saved it as a bitmap. And then when they tried to make it bigger, to so, um, use it as, as a print, as a, a print resolution, as a logo, they suddenly found that it had all little um, wavy bits that appeared on there. The edges were blurred and it was all, and it was all just really strange. That's why. It's because the, de the minute you save that as a bitmap, you're putting all sorts of artifacts around the edges of that thing um that, which is not the same thing as just putting the font in bigger joe what, uh, what you because you were in in um the this this industry what 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 were you going to say about that i heard you say something that can happen with vector too mm -hmm. um so we called it vector and raster so mm -hmm. like he said vector is lines it's mathematical and you can do the smoothest of the line and if you have a really good designer a vector designer will design two to three times bigger than what they plan on using it. That way, if you do have a jaggy edge on there, you can see it, you can manipulate it, and you can smooth it out. Um, it's kind of like drawing, um, it, just drawing with points. You make one point, make another point, and then you circle it out the way you want it. Vector images are fairly easy to manipulate if you know what you're doing, if you have the right software. Um, raster images, like he said, um, I think he called what you call it bitmap. Yeah. Um, it is literally a bunch of like blocks, kind of like remember when um, some of us who are older and we used to play like uh, Tetris and <laughs> uh, the one with the little spaceship, Astro Asteroids, Defender. Yeah. yeah. So like, like those little blocks together. that it's made out of little blocks. Yeah. Um, and those little blocks, you have to have a ton of them to look in order to make a smooth design right once you design it um it can only get so big so once again we try to make sure we have the size that, uh, that's um double of what we're trying what we're going to use it for um unless it's going on the internet um that's a whole different story but putting it on a printed product you want to make sure like if you're using a camera and taking a picture that you take a a big enough picture that you can always go down and not up. You can't go up. Right. Because if you go up, then it fills in and it gets blurry. Yeah. And sometimes that's okay. Um, but we don't like to use that as a standard. I, I like think what we want to say, I think what we want to say, yeah. if I may summarize this whole point is that it has got, you want it to look completely pro. 
whatever you're doing. So it shouldn't look goofy. It shouldn't like make look like something like you. you it, this shouldn't look anything like you made like yourself. Even if you did make it yourself, <laughs> it should look absolutely like right next. You go to you go to Forever Twenty One or Spencer's or whatever T-shirt store you like to go to, and you see all those awesome T-shirts of your favorite bands with all the cool shit on it. It when they you hold your T-shirt up, it should look like it could be right in with one of those. In every single way. The, your competition is not the other indie bands out there. Your competition, if there is such a thing, is what people have in their minds about what they're used to seeing. So that is why our recording had to get, recording product, our recording technology had to get better. Our uh, songwriting has to get better. And this is why this has to be, you know, if not beyond reproach, like it's totally pro as you can get it. This is why you don't, most people don't, you know, just hold their phone up and take a picture and say, oh, that's my album cover. You know, like you don't do that. You know, so you don't do that with this. Um, so if we can summarize it, what else? So, so we've got the images, right? We've got that all together. Um, what about the process of what should we look out for in terms of, uh, what can happen with, getting the pro getting we, we've made it it looks awesome right. what else should, should we can be considering because i i know sometimes if you do too many colors and too many options people get analysis paralysis so mm -hmm. you know you might just want to kind of write am i saying that right we should sort of like yeah. limit that maybe do you guys want to talk about how it should look when people go to your store i mean where where do we go next so we've got mm -hmm. the thing together we know that the image and everything is going to be right this um this is where color theory comes in. And part of this uh, analysis paralysis that you just talked about is this phenomenon where if you give people too many choices, then they're so blinded with choice that in the end, they just defer the decision and end up not buying it. Who here sits in front of Netflix and goes and just <laughs> clicks around trying to find something to watch mm. and end up the hour you were going to watch in front of TV, you end up just trying to figure yeah. out what to watch right it was, so we all experience this it was exactly the same as like when long before streaming services it was exactly the same as when you went in a group to the video store yeah and decided what movie you were going to rent uh, for the night oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah so um so that so that's so there's that now in terms of color you do want to be able to try and predict what people are going to want it's good to give them some options i'll tell you one thing that i hear a lot i'm going to tell you what i hear from both sides of the coin Okay. And that is, um, people always say they want shirts that aren't black. And guess what happens whenever people sell shirts that aren't black? They do a shit in the marketplace. No one ever buys them. People always want to buy black shirts. They say that they want to buy shirts that aren't black, but then they buy black shirts. That's just something that happens. However, do offer colours that aren't black, but choose the right ones. Now, one of the things you can do here is research color theory. Now, I've touched on this in other connections there, and it is interesting the way different um, the way tints, hues, and shades react to each other, and where you would place them on a color wheel. And there's little bits of um, color theory, like and you would use um, opposite ends when you want to give a strong emotional reaction, and more closer ones when you want to do something a bit more calming. These are all things that you can look into. But this means then that when you've got your design, you can then choose the just the right colors. They're going to bring out your concept the best so that when people do look at it and they have the options and they can set and let's say they say, I want a shirt that isn't um, black or maybe I mostly buy black shirts, but I'm open to one that isn't black. Actually, that that particular design looks a million bucks on that particular color. And it's because you've you, you've given them you've uh, already made that some decision for them and haven't just left it to them to figure out. I mean, like, there's even the very simple one as well, is that if you've got a light design, don't put it on a light shirt because you won't see it. Same as if you're going to have a black T-shirt, it's no good doing all your writing in black. <laughs> uh, going back to Spinal... You can just sell black T-shirts with nothing else. <laughs> in the, we just did our logo in black, just like the Spinal yeah. thing, you know? Well, that, and everybody said, just say, this is a band shirt. <laughs> Well, this that Metallica did that. Um, the black album wasn't just a plain black cover. It had Metallica logo and black on it. Well, they um, did that with varnishes and stuff, which was kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's uh, one of the deleted scenes in the movie Spinal Tap is um, after um, Smell the Glove has come out with the black, co um, black covers, they do... Uh, they, they, 
there's the bit where they did the record signing that no one shows up to yeah, in yeah. records but one of the deleted scenes is finally somebody does show up and so he gives them the record and they all sign it with the pen and give it back to him and they can't see uh, it yeah <laughs> And because they use a black pen, he's no, no, like if you tilt it that way to the light, you can see the signatures. <laughs> but, um, so, so, cu- cu- yeah, that that's the thing is black. I'm wearing the band t shirt I'm wearing right now is black, and I almost every bland, band, bland, band t shirt I have is black. Um, black goes with everything, so you know, so people that are like worried about, it, especially, uh, make sure that, I'm gonna throw one out there that I haven't nobody's brought up is make sure you put women's stuff in mm. there okay because the ladies will go i learned this uh from uh, tom hess who's like my first mentor uh you know have a couple of girl you know they, they're cut different so have mm. a couple ladies uh items there as well because you know they want the, the ladies want to look cool too they want that awesome t-shirt mm. and if it if they're, women are a little bit more fashion conscious uh i think in many times in men our guys will just throw on whatever mm. uh, here's you know you know the joke this is my uh cleanest dirtiest shirt i put it on today <laughs> you know so but ladies are going to be a little bit more discerning about the cut and everything. not the guys aren't but um mm. uh it just seems to be kind of a little little bit more of a thing with, with you know, they're going to want it to look a certain way to fit their 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 uh, um figure or whatever so think about a couple things like that um as you're um and if it's appropriate maybe you even offer other things that you know that are um that are specific for people you know that have different you know interests or whatever like yeah. you know okay. i might not want i might not want a led zeppelin pillow but <laughs> you know mm-hmm. maybe there are people that like have to have your band logo on a pillow so yeah. this might be i mean it once you know what you're doing you can put a couple of these other things up there and test and see what works and what doesn't. Ultimately, it doesn't really cost you anything to just try. A car yeah. costs very little to just try a couple of things. Um, what about the store itself? Um, actually, b- before we move on from that, yeah, I just sure. want to say also get to know fabrics. Oh, yeah. Um, I want to say, because you mentioned, you said we talked about this earlier about getting a sample. And I yeah. originally did my shirts with the cheapest line yeah. and it was like wearing it was like wearing that a prison free, issue yeah well, yeah it was like wearing like a, a brillo pad on yeah. your skin you know what i mean it was like ah and so i so i so i got rid of those and then i went all, all i did was go up one grade it was a dollar or two yeah. more and it was way and, and when i gave them the people everything like, oh yeah these are so much better yeah. i love the fabric well, on i got go, go into go go to a clothes store and actually find out what these fabrics feel like um find out what heavy cotton feels like know what heavy cotton is know what jersey cotton is know what all of these um know what medal is if you can get medal then women's sizes especially will love that um the other thing i want to mention too real because we did mention things like pillows and things like that you know do a little bit of looking around because sometimes offering something really unique that other so okay yeah i mean if you don't do a t-shirt you're kind of committing a crime of music <laughs> you have to have a t-shirt but you could do other there's a lot of other things and if you go to anyone is you know uh digi uh digi jam you go to printful printify there's there's a lot of suggestions that don't just be thinking t-shirts there's all sorts of other things that you can have done and if you want to get real creative um, and you do want to, and you you want to, you do have a little bit of money. Talk to somebody who does this. I know somebody uh, who is in the print industry, and they will make specialty things for you too. So, like one of the things that they discovered, and was because somebody requested, was like, we want to make something with hand sanit, we'll make like a hand sanitizer dispenser with the company's like logo on it. And they, the person was actually driven by the client who said, well, I think we should do this. I think it should do this. And they made this very convenient, non-messy kind of thing that they could put hand sanitizer in and people loved it. So if you got some kind of creative idea and you're not seeing it there and you're pretty sure your niche is going to dig it, you something that kind of thing you might want to actually just go to a printer or somebody that makes uh, merch and say, hey, I have this idea. You might start something new. Don't be afraid to kind of branch out a little bit. Um, what do we need to cover? Because we are we this discussion right. is right now. Let's go to going. let's go to the very last stage now. Then, so you've got kick-ass design. You know that it's print ready. You know it's a good product. You're happy to put your name on this, and you know it's something that's going to come through the post. So now you've got your online store on to sell it. 
now we're going to talk about customer service and especially um, post sales. Now, there are laws all around the world, like in the UK, there is an eye watering list of uh, laws that you have to comply with to sell online. And the big part of it is returns policy. Now, returns policy, um, in particular, like one of the things I didn't figure out for a while was how on earth you would do how you how on earth you would square this with print on demand because it's something you would never see. And the way the returns policy works in practice now with most distant selling is that when a customer lodges a complaint and it's valid, what will usually happen is that they'll do an automatic refund and they might ask for it back or send a return label for them to send the parcel back. And you can do that. Just go to the post office and they will sort you out a return label that you can print out. Um, but in practice, what usually happens is they end up keeping it and getting the refund just because it costs too much to send back. The problem is customers are getting wise to this. So now there are people who will try it on and will lodge a complaint specifically in order to get a refund and to have a free product. Now that sort of happens because people are always going to chance the system. And it sort of became seen as the cost of doing business for a long time. One of the problems now, and this has emanated from eBay and Amazon, who and eBay and Amazon are the two leaders in e-commerce. So basically what they do, everyone else follows suit sooner right. or later. And one of them, especially with Amazon Prime, has been free shipping. And Amazon's whole deal is quick shipping. For two days. Yeah, but, um, but 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 real quick, that is with Prime. You have to have a Prime membership. They don't shipping to everybody, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Unfortunately, because the fact that this thing exists at all means that every other company who thinks they want need to compete with Amazon feels they have to do this. Now, one of the big things that's happened lately with, um, in the last um, year with Etsy and with a new CEO who's really wanted to go that way and get away from what has been Etsy's USP, which has been handcrafts and like uh, Milwaukee mom who makes tea cozies. And most people know that you cannot treat a seller like that the same way you would a Chinese sweatshop. And you know that if you order from that person, you will get a much more personal product, but you'll probably have to wait for it. But now the market being as it is, they are now now they are treating the Milwaukee housewife exactly the same way as the Chinese sweatshop to the point where they expect it to be delivered for free instantly. And so a lot of people are dropping out like that. And there have even been comments like the CEO of Etsy said that he doesn't care if those sellers drop out because somebody else will, somebody else will come in and take the place. And I really don't understand why he said that publicly. Because that is just planting bad will, and that's no way to do business anywhere. I, I don't think it's realistic, um, and no. w w I think what will end up happening is people, some other for, some other platform will will yeah. rise for people that like will, will want to do that. Well, anyway, then one of the things with this now, and what Etsy's been doing, and what a lot of other people are doing as well, is then they've started um, bringing in a system now. Um, I think it's utterly misguided the way they've approached this. One of the first things they did was they made all the sellers offer free shipping, shipping and they had to bear the cost, which is something if you're just making small things that go in an envelope. But if, you're, if your business is redoing furniture or doing something that's heavy, like garden ornaments, then it's just not possible. We have to charge more for the product. All of a sudden well, exactly. Price. So well, if you charge that's... $100, if the shipping is $100, now that $100 item becomes yeah. a $200 item. Um, but, that, but anyway, now they'll say, first of all, that's not free shipping, so I've just added the shipping to the price. And also, that might be what it costs to send it to to send it to another country, but to send it to the next town, it wasn't going to cost me that much, but now I've got to charge them the same. Right. So that's the problem there. So good. So good, Joe. the thing is on that. So one of the things we need to discuss is the fact that you can sell on a network um, like Etsy or Zazzle or eBay, Amazon, all these people, and you're subject to their rules and regulations. Yeah. Not only are you subject to their rules and regulations, but you're subject to their processes on the back end, like Carrie mm. was just talking about. You know, I um, sold on eBay and Amazon for years, and you have to keep your reviews up. If you, you know, someone turns around and says they don't like the product, then you have to uh, pretty much tell them, keep the product, and mm. I'm going to refund you most of the time. 
um, or keep the product, we're going to mail you another one type situation mm -hmm. because it's just not financially feasible. But that's if you're on their network and you have to decide. So this is one of the things I wanted to say is you need traffic. So you need people to come see your print on demand product. Okay. And a lot of the reasons why Carrie and other people list on Etsy is because they have a audience that's ready to go that goes on there and searches for things. However, there's so many people using it that your design can get lost in the ecosystem of Etsy. Okay. But it's traffic. And if you don't know how to develop a funnel or a website and you don't know how to drive traffic, it's an easy way to get started creating print on demand products um, and make some money. But you're going to be subject to their rules and regulations and their specific terms. Now, when you have your own website, do you have terms and conditions that you have to apply that are the basic? Yes, you do. And that is one of the laws you've got. Yeah. So. Um, and you should really have public liability insurance as well for when things do go bad. Because, uh, I mean, another thing that comes with this, and you mentioned reviews there. Um, and another mm -hmm. thing that I think has always been the case, but is really stepping up now with things like um, Etsy's. Um, I can't remember the acronym, but they've got a policy now where if you get a strike against you, people um, there's some, some there's some rogue um, scammers now who know that they have the power to close down a shop, and they will end up using that to do blackmail. There's some that, especially coming out of Russia, there's some people who just do this. They will seek out shops, post a phony order, um, and then whether the order comes or not, they will send a bad review or a strike. And then when you go back to ask them about it, they'll say, well, that was a show I'm serious. And if you want, and if, unless you want um, me to do the same with the rest of your shop now, you PayPal me $100. And then that will, and then that will protect you. So there, so there are protection rackets being wow. run. Wow. Wow. And listen, 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 let's stop. Let's get off of this because, yeah. right, you have to follow your country's policies, follow your, uh, you know, look them up, make sure you know what's what. If you're going to, is mm -hmm. a buyer beware situation. If you're going to use Etsy, Amazon, uh, eBay, you have to, you have to be aware of all these things are terrible things are going to happen. I want to, we're getting away from what I want to, where we should be going here with this. I think it, we are doing something completely different though. We are not just selling to the open market. We're not mm -hmm. just like, throwing it out there and anybody wants about we're not doing that we are selling to our fans so you have to think about that and if some and and, and so mo i would venture that most people are going to sell either through their website or some plat some template wordpress makes a template for it shut there's shopify there's different things you could do that get around that because you're selling directly to your niche you're not just selling to to any schmo out there could some terrible thing happen yes i don't know the answer to every terrible situation it could happen i do not want people to go and say oh screw it like it's too dangerous i don't i don't want to do it um you're just keep in mind th these are your fans these are not just um uh, you know, whoever is on the internet. So yes, these terrible things can happen to you, but we're selling to fans and mm -hmm. your fans should be people that know, like, and trust you. And you have some sort of like, even if you don't know them completely personally, they should have some, so you should have some repartee, uh, uh, w w with, with them. Can people cop an attitude? Yes. I've had it happen. You know, at times you part ways shit mm -hmm. happens. So um, I, I think in terms of kind of getting around like these kind of horrible <laughs> racketeering, PayPal racketeers and everything, is you can mitigate that by maybe you don't do the Amazon thing right off the bat. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that Leah puts her albums and everything up there. I think it's a little different. I mean, can you can somebody bitch about a download? <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, you know, that's, it's, it's a little silly. And until we, we don't have mechanisms in place to deal with absolutely every circumstance, there's always going to be somebody who's out there trying to fight, scam the system. But if somebody wants a t-shirt that says Ludini rock and roll circus, I'm imagining they want it because they like me. They like my podcast. Mm -hmm. They're not going to, they're not out there saying like, hey, 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 I'm going to get this guy. You know, I mean, there's probably <laughs> a few people out there that want to get me. Yeah. But, I'll show him bull state rock yeah, and roll. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> so, don't get too let's let's not get too worried about stuff like that. Um, make sure. sure that your artwork is absolutely stellar. Make sure it's going to work on the product. Get a sample of the product. 
pay attention to the rules, the regulations of whatever platform you're doing. Pay attention to the, how long it's going to get. Another way, reason why you're going to get yourself is you'll know how long it's going to take to get that thing. So you could tell your yeah. customers, say, you know, it is a week or two. The yeah. answer to why people should buy off of you instead of Amazon Prime or whatever is very simple. You want to have stuff that they can't get on Amazon Prime. You want to have you want to have a unique thing. Also, I think it bears uh, uh, um, importance to say that w- communicate to your customers, your your fans that hey, buy this directly off me because right, you want to support, you love my music, you love what I'm doing. This is the best way to help me out, and you get like a badass t-shirt or an awesome piece of merchandise or the coolest hoodie you can ever get and make sure that you actually give them something of high value look at what your fans like well you know poll it put it up there see what they're see what they want what they want to do that you may end up finding that that who's he what's it that, that you came up with with your logo on it or the cool saying you came up with that people love so much maybe it bears buying a hundred and shipping them yourself and sending people sending people yeah. like a personalized and note then you're with. in control of the package right and you control which the package. is a big you control, thing you can control so. all of that um so that it, just like with the we talked earlier a long time ago um about releasing records and using um um uh, what's the what's the company carry that makes the alp cds for you you just send them the files it, it's it went oh kanaki um, kanaki okay you yeah. know there's a place for kanaki Right. Absolutely. There's a place for all of these things. There's a time and a place to put it on Amazon and places like that, too, as well. But, yeah, you have to kind of weigh all all that out and figure out where you are and what's best for you. I think in the very beginning, doing some print on demand to fans. I'm not t- I don't think we want to tell people to start an Amazon store today or start an Etsy store today. I don't think mm-hmm. that's really what what we're doing. Um, you, you could do that because there is a trust value. Right, Carrie? We've talked about mm-hmm. this before that, like, maybe you put an Etsy store together with the intention of you're just going to show that store just to your fans. Yeah. Um, I mean, other people will obviously see it, but yeah. you could, you know, as a way to kind of get them to sort of trust that, like, the system you have will be it- reliable and stuff because they know what Etsy is. It's the same way with Amazon yeah. and eBay, but again, it's like renting a stall in the mall, right? And it, but again, they're dealing with their favorite singer, songwriter, guitar player, podcaster, whatever. They're you know, and they they're not out. Those people aren't like out to troll you. You know, if that happens, shut, shut sure. you know, tell your fans, say, you know, X Y Z is trolling me. You know, this is terrible thing that happened. So I got to move my store over here. You sh- you have an email list, right, Joe? <laughs> You have an email list, you have chat bots, you have all kind of ways. Maybe you have SMS in place. You can tell your fans in one minute, this moron screwed up my Etsy store, so we're gonna we're all going to go over here. Boom, taken care of. So there <laughs> is ways around all these terrible things. I don't want people to get afraid to do this. That is my sort of closing thoughts on it. What do you guys got? Anything else you guys want to add? So the only thing I want to say on that is, if you're going to list your products on a network or a social conglomerate like Amazon, you know, Etsy, so forth, there's Zazzle, there's a ton of them. Right. They all have their own rules. They all have their own profit margins. They all have their own way of doing things like Zazzle doesn't list things the way Amazon does. Um, you know, the, the rules are different. They sell differently. So know what you're doing. And if you're going to create your own funnel or store, there's different ways that you can increase the value and charge more or about the same as what you would on Amazon. And the goal is to get 20 people who buy from you and leave a positive review versus that one person who doesn't. Okay. And it really depends on where you are right now, both financially and with your audience. So if you have a huge audience, there's more you can do that maybe you don't want to list on Amazon right now because you have that audience, that list of emails that you can send out to. But if you don't have that audience, a list of emails, then you want to make a different decision. It's all about creating something unique and creative and then getting it in front of the right audience and getting your band and your music more exposure and making a little bit more money in order to keep creating more music right and build up like that momentum so everybody's solution is not going to be exactly the same good point if you're sitting on more money 
and you can do things a little differently, like create your own website and funnel, um, or you know those skills, then you may say, hey, I'm not going to deal with Amazon, Etsy, or Zazzle, or any of these other ones. I want my own funnel. And then that strategy is a little different. Right. But if you're going to list it on one of these networks, then just do the research, find out what their terms and conditions, their policies, what they want you to do is, and then work within their limits and get 20 positive reviews versus that one negative. The, the other thing too with negative reviews, just real quick guys, the best way to do with ne negative reviews, because I've had negative reviews in my other business, is to address them. So somebody gives you a negative review, get right on there and say, I'm so, you know, make it public, right? You can respond to their review. I'm so sorry, Mr. Jones, that you had this problem. We will do everything we can to resolve it. If somebody does a troll type thing and wants to hold you for ransom, you need to contact that platform immediately and say, look, you know, user XYZ is mm -hmm. trying to hold me up, you know, is making me want to pay like ransom for review for because or else is going to give me bad reviews. And they will investigate stuff like that, too. It's and not, the reason it's not completely yeah. like you're not completely screwed. The I've reason had bad why issues with people on, on, uh, on yeah. both with PayPal and with uh, with with eBay. And it's, I know for a fact, PayPal really like they took their time. They really worked on it. We got the thing resolved. Yeah. Um, so do they yeah. so, you know, just make sure you're, you have documentation and stuff like that. Go ahead, Kerry. Yeah. Etsy's Etz, problem is they're not doing that. They've decided that default is going to side with the buyer and they don't want to do it. They do not have the staff and do not want to employ the staff to deal with. I'm going to tell you right now, and this is what's going to go away. This is what's going to hurt them. Yeah, Etsy's going to go away if they're if they're going to do stuff like that. so. You know, yeah. research what platform you're going to be using because from you know, Carrie knows Etsy really well, so he's able to speak about it. You know, we don't. You don't yeah. like Joe said. There's all these other platforms. It's like look at ask other people. Don't be afraid if you see other bands on some of these other platforms. Shoot them an email. Say hey, you know, I have a band or I'm a musician and I'm thinking about how's this platform working out for you. You know, I mean. That just goes to creating the community of musicians and network of musicians you should know anyway. So don't be afraid to ask some questions. Um, go back and look. This was a very dense podcast where we talked about a lot of stuff. So go back. I do have, I will publish notes with it on the, um, uh, on the, Podbean platform. So those of you that go there, ludini.podbean.com, you could, you'll be able to see the notes and links and stuff like that. Um, very, uh, it, it, you know, it's just make sure that you study this and look mm -hmm. at some other materials on it as well. Maybe even take a course on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's tons of YouTube channels. Get as much information as you can because, you, A, you want to be successful at it, right? I mean, all the way down, something we didn't talk about is what your, you know, what the, what your store should look like and what kind of images you should use. All of that will go into your success. So, And there's people out there that are way more knowledgeable about it. We are giving you an overview. There's, there's a lot of minutia to this that we did not get into today. So maybe we will do a series on it at some point. Um, but we'll, po we'll, post some, we'll post the notes out there. Uh, parting thoughts. Joe. None. Just don't be afraid to be creative, guys. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Carrie? Um, it's been uh, recently somebody said, hey, this thing's like the Wild West right now. Um, that, and the internet always has been the, in, um, the Wild West. That's what's great about it. And so, yeah, there's dangers, but there's opportunities as well. Right. Um, and there'll always be, some, always be some asshole that pisses in the pool. <laughs> but, if you're, um, but if you're creative, you've got an idea, you will find a way. Don't get pissed on in the pool, guys. Yeah. Kai, Kai, there's nothing else I can say to that. All right, guys, have a great <laughs> week. We'll catch you on the next <laughs> show. Uh, go to LudiniRockAndRollCircus.com, and all the information you need to know is there. Have a great one. Carrie, uh, what, was it, what was your website again? Uh, KJKMusic.co.uk. And Joe? OrangeTreeMarketing.com. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you on the next Ludini's, Ludini Rock and Roll Circus Musicians Mastermind. Have a good one.